from New York, where the American stage begins, NBC presents Best Plays with John Chapman. Best Plays, a series of hour-length dramas transcribed from the outstanding successes of the New York stage. Now John Chapman. Editor of the theatrical yearbook Best Plays and drama critic of the New York Daily News is here to introduce Arthur Kennedy and Myron McCormick in A Bell for Adano. <laughs> Mr. Chapman. A best play, to be a best play, must have some good writing. And for A Bell for Adano, which is our drama this evening, there could not have been a better combination than John Hersey and Paul Osborne. Hersey, at the time of this play, was a war correspondent who was not only a first-class reporter, but also a man possessed of a creative mind. Out of what he saw and heard during our campaign in Italy, he wrote a novel, A Bell for Adano. Osborne, another man with a creative mind, saw and heard a play in this book. So he adapted it for the stage. The resulting drama is quite generally considered to be the best play of World War II. This evening we rejoice in having Arthur Kennedy in the role of Major Joppolo and Myron McCormick as his loyal helper, Sergeant Boris. Mr. Kennedy has just begun rehearsals in a new drama for Broadway by Arthur Miller. And I hope, as all drama critics always hope for all plays, that it will be great. So now, let's begin. You, Major Giappolo, are running the captured town of Adano, Sicily. It's the summer of 1943, and you have made the town's city hall your headquarters. Affairs, Section AMG, from Victor Giappolo, Major AMG, subject Town of Adano. One, Town of Adano, occupied by advance units of 49th Division, 0600, July 9th. Two, civil authority assumed by Major Victor Giappolo, 1300, July 9th. Headquarters established in former mayor's office, Town of Adano. Should have brought our roller skates. Some difference from those streets we came through. If this was the mayor's office, can you imagine what Mussolini's was the men like? Yeah. How you like being Mussolini here in Adano, Major? Yeah, uh, cut the kitty. See, look at that picture. Maybe it's by someone famous. The Italians had some good artists, you know, boy. Still are, huh? And what? Getting sentimental. Your job is to clean up the streets in this town. Get it in order. I know my job, Boris. I know what I want to do here. Say, where is everybody? Flood to the hills are hiding. How do we get them out? How do we show them that we're friends? Friends? Well, what do you think we're here for? To clean up the streets, Major. Look, Boris. Do you remember that dead Sicilian woman in the alley shot this morning in the invasion? Yeah. Do you think she was an enemy of ours? Nuts. My grandmother must have been like her. She came from a little Italian town like this near Florence. Those aren't the ones we're after. It's this bunch of crooks that were here in City Hall. Hell, yeah, Major, now you're in City Hall. Maybe you'll turn out to be a crook. I'm standing a kid about, Boris. Yes, sir. Let's take a look around here. Hey, what's in that other room? Five. Ah. Hey, this is okay. Names. Names. Everybody in the dollars. Oh, this will make my job easier. I can weed out the bad ones. And... Hey. Hey, you. Come out of that. Come on. Welcome to Americans. Welcome to Americans. Liberals left. I always hated fascists. Liberals left. Who are you? Tito Giovanni. I've been well known as anti-fascist. What was your job before the invasion? Tito Giovanni. Usher in the city hall. The native of Adano. Usher, huh? Why did you work for fascists if you hated them? There's no need to lie. One I had to eat. One I had to earn a living. I have a 60 children. Now that I can understand. And boy, it's in his record, Major. So, you were a fascist, huh? 
Well, now you'll have to learn to live in a democracy. You will sit at that desk and be my usher. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, yes, sir. <laughs> I'm Major Joppolo. This is Sergeant Boyd. Right. Now, what condition is the town in? And has it been bad here? Oh, we have been bombed and bombed for three days, and we've not had bread. The stink of the dead is very bad. Some people have been sick because the drivers of the water carts have been afraid to get water for several days because of the planes along the road. And our bell is gone. Your bell? Yes, Mr. Major. It was 700 years old. It rang with a good tone each quarter hour. Mussolini took it. Yeah? He took it to make a rifle of barrels. The town was very angry when we lost our bell. Only two weeks before you came. Why did you not come soon? Where was this bell? In this building, up there. Well, there's nothing we can do about that now. Zito, uh, I want to speak to the priest of this town. Which priest, Mr. Major? In the Dano, there are 13 churches. Some with three priests. Which church is best? San Angelo, because of Father Penzavecchio, is the best of all. Ask him to come and see me, will you please? Right away. Immediately, Mr. Major. Welcome to America. And stop giving the fascists the loot. <laughs> oh, boy, there's so much to do, I don't know where to begin. Listen. Instructions to civil affairs officers. First day. Place guards and seize all records. Place all food warehouses, enemy food dumps, wholesale food concerns, and other major food stocks under guard. <laughs> there isn't even any bread. See that the following establishments are under guard. Foundries, machine shops. Hey, Muscles, we're invading Chicago. Uh, I'll get the gear out of the jeep. Uh, Major? Yeah? Just clean up the street. <laughs> Notes. From Joppolo to Joppolo. Don't let the red tape get you down, huh? Always be accessible to the public. Don't play favorites. Don't lose your temper. When plans fall down, improvise. <laughs> Sure you don't mind if I set up MP headquarters in the next office, Major? No, that's fine, Captain Purvis. How about the truck convoys? Can they get through the town all right? We've routed it so everything bypasses the town. Oh, that's fine. Thanks. See you, Major. Hey, Capone, Schultz, get that stuff in here. Uh, Mr. Major, Father Pennsylvania was the call me. Good. Uh, Zito, what does this town need most right now? Uh, maybe food. There's been no bread for three days. And no fish. Why not? Tomasino tells them not to fish. He hates the fascists. Uh, he hates the Americans, too. Oh, he does, huh? Most of all, we need the bell. The bell will give life back to the people. It was the tone. It soothed the people. The bell... Listen, that's I'm... all I've heard from you, the bell. There are more important things than the bell. The I've bell... heard all I want to about the bell. If anybody says the word bell again in this office... Come in. Major Giopolo, I'm Father Pensilvetti. Oh, thank you for coming, Father. Welcome to Adamo. I've been trying to get the ideas of various people as to what's the first thing to be done for the town. I know the people are hungry, the streets must be cleaned up. There are so many things. Yes. Also of greatest importance, Major, is the matter of the bell. Ah, so I've heard. You see, this bell was the center of the town. Even we in the churches depended on the bell more than on our own. At noon on the Sabbath, when all the bells in town rang at once, this bell rose above all the others. This was the one you listened to. The bell regulated and gave meaning to life in this town. Uh, yes, I'll keep the bell in mind. Uh, Father. Yes, Major. The fighting is over here in Adano. Thank God. Less than an hour ago, I landed here and walked through the streets to this building. I saw the filth of the town, the poverty. I'm told that some have had no food for three days. I want to change all that, Father. I want the hungry to be fed. I want the sick to be well. I, I want the filth to be cleaned. I want to make a Dono shine. I think maybe you will, my son. To do that, I must have the goodwill of the people. Therefore, 
I should like to ask a favor of you. But please, feel perfectly free to refuse if you wish. I will not refuse you. I should like to have you say a few words to these people about the Americans. That they're about to post certain proclamations which should be read. That I can easily do. There is a crowd already gathered outside. Father, I assure you that the Americans want to bring only good to this town. But it is possible that some Americans who come here will do bad things. If they do, I can tell you that most of the Americans will be just as ashamed of those things as you are annoyed by them. I think we will understand weakness in your men just as we try to understand it in our own. I will talk to the people now. From the balcony, Father. I have a word to say to you, my children. Everything that is done in this world is done by God. God gave us bread. What do you want this for, lady? God Hold it. has now given us deliverance from our oppressors. Our prayers are now answered. And the men we feared are now in the hills. Which God, in his infinite forgiveness, gave them to hide. The Americans are here now. And you all know, no matter whom you have as authorities, you must obey the law. If you remember, we were told that Americans attacked priests and attacked and killed women. But right here now is an American, an American in charge of Adamno. I have talked with him, and I feel that he is here with only one idea, to feed you, to clothe you, to make you free. You know what he said to me. He said, I want to make Adorno shine. Because of this man, I feel that the Americans are going to be my friends. You must believe the same things, my children. Thank you, Father. And now I must be about my duties. Good day, my son. All right, boys, what are you waiting for? Let's get started. Okay, Judge. Captain Purvis. Yes, Major. Find out where the powerhouse is. Put all the public utilities in order. Oh, Bonnie, get that stuff in here. Yo! Standing with your thumb in your mouth. Come on! I am still chief. I am chief of Carabinieri. You are no longer chief. Where is your coat? I am the chief. I have always come to the head of the line. I will arrest you right now. So, you are arrested. Take your hands off. Arrested, arrested, arrested. Why is this going on? Capani. Yes, sir. How did these people get in here? Major's orders, Captain Purvis. Anybody gets that. Anybody. How can I get anything done with all that noise? Arrested. You go to jail. Turn up. Where's Jablo? Right here, Captain. I'll take over. Oh, yeah. Capani, shut that door. Well... What is all this? This woman questioned my authority. Your authority to do what? To push his way to the head of the line in front of Zapula's bread shop. But he's a privilege the officials of this town have always enjoyed. Yeah? But it is not right for the chief of the Carabinieri to have to wait in line for his bread. But she, she, this woman, she made a disturbance. I have arrested her for disturbing the peace and questioning authority. What's your name? Tina, daughter of Tomasino, the fisherman. I think he has no right to push himself to the head of the line. Gargano, you charge this woman with disturbing the peace and questioning authority? Yes, Mr. Major. Tina, I sentence you to one day in jail, and I suspend the sentence. Oh. Gargano, wait, I want to talk to you. You may go, Tina. Oh, thank you, Mr. Major. Oh, you're Tomasino's daughter, the boss fisherman. Uh, yes, Mr. Major. He doesn't like the Americans. Oh, he has always hated the men who were in this building. I'm anxious to start the fishermen going out again. I, I, I'd like to talk to your father. I wonder if you couldn't explain to him that the men who are now in this building are different from the men who were here before. I could tell him there was justice in this building today. <laughs> yes, well, 
Just try to get him to come and see me, if you can. Uh, yes, Mr. Major. You may go now. Thank you, Mr. Major. Gargano, in this case, the woman was right. You were wrong. Me? You have no right to push yourself to the head of the line. I didn't agree with her openly because I wish to keep you in office. Because I think you should learn the right way to do things. Zito. Yes, Mr. Major. Tell all the town council who are in the building to come here. Oh, yes, Mr. Major. Yes. Gargano, it's important that we understand each other. Adano has been a fascist town. But I told you when I appointed you, it's no longer being run that way. It's now being run as a democracy. Well, perhaps you don't know what that is. I'll tell you. One of the main things is that the men of the government are no longer the masters of the people. They are the servants of the people. Elected by the people, paid by the people out of their taxes. Therefore, you are now the servant of Adano. I, too, am their servant. When I go to buy my bread, I'll take my place at the end of the line and wait my turn. If I find you don't act that way, I'll remove you. And watch. You may find that this thing will make you happier than you've ever been in your life. You may find that. What's going on down there? Oh, take a look. General Marvin. General Marvin. Where's my helmet? What's he doing here? He's passing through one of the water carts is in his way. Well, is there a truck convoy going? Ah, it's just Marvin and his command car. You can't do this. Throw me my belt. Major, don't tangle with General Marvin. He'll murder you. This is an MC job. He turned it over. Listen to that mule. Shoot the mule. Let go of my arm. This is Major. Take it easy. Don't talk back to him. Stay off that stop. Let go. Teach these people a lesson. Who's in charge of this town anyway? I am, sir. Major Victor Giappolo. Huh. Oh, yeah? Major, these Italian carts are holding up the whole invasion. The invasion's finished in this town, sir. We're trying to reconstruct. Reconstruct? What's that got to do with it? There's a war going on. These streets have got to be kept open. But no troops are going through here now, General. The water is vital to the town. I'm going through here. Carts got in my way. You keep those cars out of this town. But, General... You heard what I said, Major. You keep these cars out of town. Yes, sir. I'll attend to it right away. Donald's the name of this town. Remember that, Middleton? Yes, sir. And what was that Major's name again? Uh, Joppolo, sir. Joppolo. Don't forget that name either, Middleton. Now, let's get out of here. We've got a water fight. Mr. Major. Huh? What is it, Sido? The town council is awaiting. Oh. <clears throat> Gentlemen, in a democracy, one of the most important things is that for everyone to know as much as possible about what is going on. The American authorities have decided because of military necessity it will be no longer possible for mule carts to come into the streets of Adano. But, Mr. Major... No carts, how can it's we... It's military do? necessity. Captain Purvis. Yes, sir. In the name of General Marvin, I order you to keep all carts out of Adano. Stop him at the bridge at the east and the sulfur refinery on the west. Yes, sir. The pony, get my seat. Well, what are the rest of you waiting for? You may go. Hey, what have we been doing? Now, wait. I want you to know that I'm not happy at this occurrence. I'll do everything in my power to have this unjust order revoked. Yes, Mr. Major. <laughs> oh, we kiss your hand, Mr. Mason. Yes, Where do we go from here, boys? Where do we go from here? That dirty, rotten heel. That dirty, rotten heel. Look, 
Major Jarpolo. I've been all over Sicily. I tried to swipe a couple of gas trucks from the Air Force, but they turned me down. What about jeeps? Well, you can't haul all the water you need for this town in a five-gallon can, Major. Anyway, the motor pool wouldn't give me the jeeps. Say they can't spare them. We've got to find some way for bringing food and water into this town. Oh, those crummy cops. <laughs> well, that's not your fault, Major. Your neck's not out. All you got to do is send in your report that Marvin ordered the cops to stay out and let GHQ worry about it. You're in the clear. Ah, you take things too hard. Why don't you relax a little? Hey, how about you and me going out and getting drunk tonight? Oh, I'd like to, Purvis. He's a man. I've got to meet the council tonight. Uh, well, i got to send somebody out to track down some wheat that's been left on a siding outside of town. Wheat? Yeah, somebody lost it, I guess. Five cars. See, that'd be enough. Purvis, grab it, will you? I haven't gotten the order. Forget the order. It's lost, isn't it? But if division hears about it... Listen, Purvis, we need that wheat bad. We've got to get food into this town. Well, uh, I'll see what I can do. Zito. Yes, sir, Mr. Major? I was thinking about that bell. The bell? Yes, sir, Mr. Major. Zito, what would you think... If we got you a Liberty Bell. Uh, what is this a Liberty Bell? It's the bell the Americans rang when they declared themselves free from the English. Uh, the idea is good, but would America want to part from this bell for a dollar? <laughs> I don't think so, Zito. We'd have to get a replica. Uh, describe this bell. Well, it's, uh, it's bronze, I think. It has a large crack near the bottom from its age. And it says on it, Proclaim liberty throughout all the land to all the inhabitants thereof. The words are good. Uh, how's the tone? Well, that would depend on the replica. Now, about this crack, how old is this bell? Oh, nearly 200 years. And it has a crack? A new bell like that should not crack. Our bell was 700 years old, but it had no crack. Couldn't you get us a Liberty Bell without a crack? <laughs> but without the crack, it wouldn't be a Liberty Bell. Adana would not like to have a crack, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, I was afraid of that. Well, we'll have to think of something else, you know. Yes, Mr. Major. Uh, oh, there is someone to see you. Bring him in. Yeah. Uh, he wants to see you about the cards. The business of the cards is settled. It's a military necessity. Well, what's your name? Don't shout. I'm not deaf. Uh, <clears throat> uh, yes, Mr. Major. What do you want? Uh, Mr. Major. The worst of all the things about the carts is the food. You can see, Mr. Major, that a man who is a fat, like I am, can, uh, can speak with authority about the food. Uh, there are others who are not so lucky as I am. Galeotto Bartolomeo is so thin... You can count the several teeth of his mouth when his lips are closed. The minor children of Raphael have big bellies, but uh, their bellies are big only with the gas of hunger. Uh, shall I name others for a very thing? No, no, no. Go on. You have not seen my cart, Mr. Mace. Well, I, I may have. I've seen many of them. <laughs> but you would not forget mine. It has a four scene of paint on it. From the Holy Word. And they're all concerned with eating. There is the miracle of the loaves and the fishes. It's the last supper. And all of the people in these pictures are fat people. Because mine is the cart for food. <laughs> I do not think it's sacrilegious that even uh, Jesus himself is a fat on my cart. But now, how can I put between the shafts of my fat horse? Whose name is General Eisenhower in honor of our deliverer. I would put myself on the on the seat and drive around with my pictures of fat and the holy people when the people of Adan were starving. This fills me with shame. There is nothing in all the proclamation which say American come to Adano in order to make the people die of hunger, to die of thirst. Is there? <coughs> uh, thank you, Mr. Lee. I want you to know that I've been doing everything in my power to bring food and water to the people of Adana without making use of the carts. But, uh, Mr. Major, the carts are the only way to bring you food. You don't seem to understand. I'm powerless to let the carts back into Adano. The order to keep them out was given by a general of the United States Army. 
I'm only a maid. What the food that Mr. Maid is the children are hungry. That's a tough one, don't you? Shut up, boy. Sure, sure. Purvis! You want me, Major? Purvis, I want you to remove your guards from the bridge and the sulfur works and start letting the carts back into town. What's that, sir? You heard me. Now do it. Carter, start bringing your carts into town. The me. The food carts, the water carts, all the carts. It's amazing. I keep it in your hand. The thing. You, you can't you. countermand Marvin's order. Who says I can't? It's General Marvin. Ever... Oh, my ever-loving mother. General Marvin has ruined everything we've won here. This town is dying. We're not here to kill people. That's a murderous chance you're taking, Major. Purvis, I order you on my authority to start letting the cars back into town beginning now. I take absolute and complete responsibility. Yes, sir. Trapani, get my key. Well, boys, what are you staring at? Me? Nothing, Gucci. Nothing at all. In a moment, Act Two of A Bell for Adano, starring Arthur Kennedy and Myron McCormick. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Enjoy the finest in radio around the clock on KFI Los Angeles. For an hour of top drama, be sure to hear Theater Guild on the air this evening for the intriguing mystery drama, The Unguarded House, starring screen favorites Michael Redgrave and Nina Falk. Remember, that's Theater Guild on the Air this evening at 5.30 on Station KFI. Now, Act Two of the Best Plays production of A Bell for Adamo. Captain Purvis looking just a bit worse for wear, strides into MP headquarters. Stefani? Stefani! Uh, he's out, Captain. Uh, kind of sick. He was, uh, sort of celebrating last night. Yeah. Got, uh, got kind of a funny feeling at the pit of his stomach. Don't and... tell me about it. Yeah, what are these Italians putting their wine? Uh, MP headquarters, Captain Purvis. Oh, hello, Lieutenant. How are you this morning? Yeah, me too. That stuff's poison. Duffalo? No, he, he wasn't there. No, he's, he's okay. A little too serious. Always talking about democracy like it was his mother. Well, listen, I told you about those cards. I could get my end in the sling. I know, but I'm responsible to Algiers. I'd better get out a report on it just to cover. Well, why not? Why should I burn for Jopolo? Okay, see you. Good morning, Captain. Where have you been, Trapani? Uh, I... Take this down. Yes, sir. The Lieutenant Colonel W.W. W. Morris, G. 149th Division. From Captain N. Purvis, 123rd MP Company, Adano. Subject, Mule Carts, Town of Adano. One, on July 19th, orders were received from General Marvin, 49th Division, to keep all mule carts out of the town of Adano. Order carried out. Two, on July 21st, guards were removed on order of Major Victor Joppolo, Civil Affairs Officer, Town of Adano, and carts were allowed back in town. Okay, uh, make that out, Trapani, and send it to G1, a division. Yes, sir. Oh, what do they put in that wine? I'll be right back. Well, that does it. Boy, he saw a Chapolo. Chapolo was right about those carts. If Marvin ever sees this, good night. Ah, uh, you can't blame Purvis for trying to cover himself. Marvin will never get back here, and he'll never even notice the carts. But once this is on paper... A sure way to cook the major. Yeah. Hey, huh? Suppose I add something. Cards removed because carts were essential to town, and town was in bad shape without same. If I stuck that in, do you think it would make it sound better for the major? Yeah, what's the difference? They can't get you for it. Mr. Farney, Joe. 
Get a squad out on the double. Report to the market square. Oh, what's up, Captain? NASA, the ex-mayor, just came down in the hills. Get going. All that crowd tears into pieces. Police. <laughs> what are you going to do with me? If you're going to shoot me, tell me first. Don't shoot me from behind. That's the way he used to do. Shoot huh? him from behind. Shut up. Or drop him off. Please, Please Americans, off. if you're going to shoot me, tell me. Don't shoot me in the back. Where is he, boy? Uh, oh, your mayor, Nasta. Uh, Mr. Major, I, uh, uh, I've come down from the hills. I, I have decided to help the Americans. Sit down. But I... Sit down. Uh, After nine years of graft and keeping these people down, you've thought it over and want to help. Well, you have other fascists in office here. I've seen their faces. Mr. Major, in my heart, I was always anti-fascist. Always... Liar. I can help, Mr. Major. If you use others, why not Tanasta? What do you think you could do? Huh. I, uh... I know the town. I know the people. I've been thinking, uh, why could I not to be uh, the mayor? Mayor? No? No. Perhaps not, huh? Perhaps I would accept something uh, less than the mayor. Oh, you would. You think the Americans are complete fools. Well, maybe we are. Maybe we ought to shoot you huh? or put you in jail. Well, no. But we don't do things that way. Uh. You'll get your trial in time. You'll pay for every crime against the Dono. Cut from the fish market to the bakery, the vegetable market. You stole 25% of the city impost tax. But, uh, and you fought for Franco in Spain. Not gallantly, but you fought for him, right? But, uh, but uh, you had two girls in this town you took over, and when you were through with them, you got rid of them, right? Who is it, Mr. Mayor? I am the man who knows more about you than you do yourself, Mayor. I'm the man who checks up on people. Master, here's what I want you to do. Every morning, you report to Sergeant Borth of the American Army. That's all you have to do every day. Uh, the rest of the day, you may go about the town and mingle with the crowd. Crowd? No, no, no. Your no, own no, people. No. If they don't cut your throat, you may learn something from them. And, uh... Where will I find this American, this uh, Sergeant Bort? I am Sergeant Bort. Oh. So every morning you'll come to me and repent your sins. Is that right, noble mayor? I will report, but I will not be humiliated, Bort. Uh, Sergeant Bort. Yes, Sergeant Bort. All right. Come along now. What sin would you like to repent first? This is outrageous. I am an Asta. And that is the first sin you would like to repent? Well, that's a dandy sin to repent, noble mayor. Now get going. <laughs> Tomasino, the fisherman, is here, Mr. Major. Good, good. Bring him in. Uh, Bort. Yes, Major? Get down to the Navy office and ask Lieutenant Livingston to come here. Lieutenant Livingston, yes, sir. Tomasino, the fisherman. Hey, go on, that's Mr. Major. All right, sir. Man of authority, arrest me. <laughs> arrest you? I'm not going to arrest you, Tomasino. All right, then shoot me. Go ahead, I give you my back. Shoot me. I'm not going to shoot you either. I want to talk with you. Men in this building do not talk to people. They arrest them. They shoot them. Well, maybe that's the way it used to be, but it isn't that way any longer. Now, sit down, Tomasino. Why should I sit down? All right, don't sit down then. I just want to tell you that I want you and the others to start fishing again. Why? So that we can line the pockets of the authorities? I am an old man. I have seen men of authority come and go. I do not believe you are any different from the others. I don't care what you think personally. The people of Adano are hungry. They must have fish. I do not believe that that is the reason. I will not go fish. Now listen to me. I've heard about you. You've got some crazy idea that we're going to cheat you. I don't want to argue. I want you to start fishing. And who is going to be protector of these fishermen? What criminals? Protection from what? <laughs> from what? One time, Florentine Cagliacci, he said he didn't need protection. 
Next to which is both to lay burning at the mooring. There isn't going to be anything like that. You mean uh, there would be no protection? No tribute? Of course not. Look, Tomasino, I want you to be head over the fishermen. You want the fishermen over fishermen? Yes. What's wrong with that? May I sit down now, America? <laughs> Certainly, Tomasino. A fisherman over fisherman. There's justice in that. But I could not do it. Why not? Because then I would be man of authority. I would be the thing I have hated all my life. Look, Tomasino, you don't have to be like the others before. The real authority lies in the people themselves. No, he's a too good. There is a trick. Let me start here, Major. No, in, a, in a moment, Sergeant. Well, Tomasino, what do you say? American, uh, I begin to think you may be different. I will be head fisherman for this town. Good. Now all we need is the permission from the Navy. Oh, uh, boys. Lieutenant Livingston, United States Navy. Come in, Lieutenant. Glad to see you. This is Tomasino, head fisherman. Uh, we need your permission and some charts of the minefield. Suppose you have them ready day after tomorrow. I wonder if you're aware, Major, that this fishing is... Uh... More or less a Navy deal. Oh, sure. Of course it is. That's why I asked you for the charts. I'm afraid it's impossible. What do you mean? The Navy has a certain authority of its own, Major. We have to get permission from Com Navit. And he's an admiral. But it's just fish. You wouldn't understand. This is a Navy problem, Major. Listen, Lieutenant, this town is hungry. It needs fish. What's eating you? Perhaps if you'd gotten in touch with me earlier. What's the matter? You saw her? I'd hardly call it that, Major. All right, you're sore. Now, listen, Lieutenant. Unless you get permission for those men to go out, I'm going to send a separate letter naming each person who dies of hunger in this town to your commanding officer. And in each letter, I'm going to say it's your fault. Well, maybe we can work something out. You're bloody well right we can. Have those charts ready tomorrow. Yes, sir. All right, Tomasino. Mr. Major... All we want in the world is to go fishing. Thank you, Mr. Major. Yes, yes. You are different. Thank you, Mr. Major. Um, look, uh, Livingston, I'm afraid I was kind of abrupt now. It never occurred to me I was stepping on the Navy's toes. As a matter of fact, you're going to be one popular guy around town. I am? Well, as soon as the town starts eating fish, they'll be awfully grateful to you. <laughs> grateful myself, I could use some fish. Those army sea rations are pretty awful, aren't they? <laughs> Every time I eat fish, I'll be grateful to the Navy. <laughs> uh, cigarettes? Uh, I suppose it is important for morale. Makes all the difference in a winning or losing team. I know at Yale, I was on the crew there, you know. Oh, you were? Didn't you know? No, no, I didn't. Well, that's how I got into the Navy. I told them I had experience with small boats. <laughs> uh, uh, say, Livingston, you have a lot of bells in the Navy, don't you? Bells? On boats, I mean. Nice, loud bells. Oh, sure. Navy's lousy with bells. Well, we've got to get together more often, huh? Look, Major, I've organized a little club down by the harbor. Took over a little house just for a place to uh, drop in at. Got hold of some scotch. Just a few cases. Well, why don't I buy you a few drinks? Just now that we know each other better. Hey, Chapani. Yeah? Hey, did you finish that report on the cards? I'm taking an end of Purvis now. Look, why don't you just lose it on his desk? Huh? Yeah, he never goes through that mess. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Oh, they'll be there for years. Yeah, much obliged. Mr. Major. Huh? Oh, you're Tina, Tomasino's daughter. Mr. Major, once in my life I have seen my father smile before Mussolini came to power. 
<laughs> Today he smiled. I'm glad you got him to come and see me. Um, have you seen the town from this balcony? Oh, no. It, it's very beautiful. My father and mother came from a little town in Italy, just like this one. Oh, you like it here in Adano, then? Oh, yes, very much. I think maybe I've, I've never been so happy in my life. Where were you from in America? Oh, the, the Bronx, <laughs> in New York. I should love to go there. It is very beautiful, the uh, Bronx. Well, for my parents, I think it's beautiful. Um, my father has a good job. And um, my mother has a washing machine. But it, it wasn't so beautiful for me. I knew there were places that were better. <laughs> it's, it's hard to explain. Oh, you don't have to explain. I know what it is to be restless. Yeah? That's why my hair is blonde, I guess. It, it is not natural. I dyed it because I was not satisfied. Everyone here had dark hair. I wanted to change myself. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I know. was tired of just being Tina. Tomasino Tina. I felt if I could only get away from Madonna, but I couldn't, so I dyed my hair instead. You must have had a wonderful life, Mr. Major. Oh, I, I hardly say that. I have seen it in the movies. So beautiful. Did you go to a big American college? I had to go to work when I was 16. My first job made $12 a week. Oh, how much is that? Oh, um, 1,200 lira. Well, wonder. Oh, you were rich when you were 16. Oh, no, that's not so much in the States. Anyway, a few years later, I got a job in the city government as a clerk in the Department of Sanitation. Later, there were examinations for advancement, and my mother-in-law said I should try to pass them. You are married? Yes, uh, Tina. She is pretty, the wife. Yes, at least she seems so to me. I miss her very much. Yes. Mr. Major, how long will the war go on here in Italy? Oh, a couple of months, I guess. How long do you think it will be before our Italian prisoners of war are released? Why, have you someone who is captured? Oh, I do not know, captured or killed. Georgie and I were going to be married. Could you find out for me whether he is a prisoner? I can't do anything about that. That isn't my business. I'm a civil affairs officer. Oh, please help me, Mr. Major. You see, Giorgio, he, he was more like my brother. He was going to be a musician. He hated killing. It's so awful to think of him in some prisoner's camp. I'm afraid you've made a mistake, Tina. I do not understand, Mr. Major. If your reason for coming here was so I could find your sweetheart for you, you can come during business hours and state your case. Yes, Mr. Major. Goodbye. But I did not come to ask about Giorgio. I did not think of him till you mentioned your wife. Sometimes women can be lonely, too. Tina, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Yes, Mr. Major. There's a shipment of Italian prisoners at Vicinamare now. They'll be released next week. Do you think Giorgio is among them? I have no way of knowing. Mr. Major, I... Uh, my father said I should ask you to our house tonight. I have cooked a rone. <laughs> That's very kind of you. I'd like very much to come. We live at Vittorio Emanuele number three. Oh, good night, Mr. Major. Perny. What are you doing at Clover's desk? That report around here is that Major Joppolo was near the top of those papers. I buried it at the bottom of the pile. Oh, brother, it's lucky Clover's is a lazy stiff. But if he ever clears out that mail, it's good night, Major. Yes, Mr. Major. It looks like maybe we got a bell. A bell? Hey, a good bell? Oh, for Navy Destroyer. Livingston's arranging it. Oh, the Yale yeah, Livingston? Never mind. He's getting it for us. The ship was named the Corelli, named after an American who rescued an Italian freighter in World War I. It's bronze, and it's inscribed, 
USS Corelli, America, Italy. <laughs> good, good. But how is the tone? Well, we'll have to wait and see. I think Donna will like this bell. It is very well that the news should come today. Why today? Because our war prisoners come home today. Oh, yeah. yeah <laughs> All the women are weeping. They will be lonely no more, Mr. Major. Yeah, I was down there. They started to run for the men, screaming the man's name. The men didn't run. They knew the women were there. But the women weren't so sure. I'd say your chances in Adano and getting your man back was three to one. Against. I think maybe I'll go down there. Uh, Major. Tomasino's daughter, Tina. What about her? I asked. The little guy she was going to marry. He got it. Oh. Oh, uh, thanks, Sergeant. <laughs> Barney? Uh, yes, sir, Captain. What's this paper? Uh, that, sir? The report on the carts. You told me to make it out. Where did I tell you to send it? G1 of division, sir. Why in blazes didn't you send it? Well, I put it on your desk for approval, sir. What's this? Barney, did you add something? Because carts were essential to town, and town was in bad shape without same. Did I tell you? I just thought that was the case, sir. Oh, you did. What are you, a soldier or a poet? Yes, sir. Copy that over the way I gave it to you and show it to me when it's finished. Yes, sir. Trouble with this army is it's too inefficient. Why? Oh, bother me, Porth. What do you got there? It's a report on Jopolo's countermanding Marvin's order about the carts. Well, let me see. It's a lousy thing to do if you ask me. If that ever goes to Marvin, he'll bust Jopolo like he was a fly. Hmm, suppose I just see it doesn't get to Marvin. Oh, look, Borth, I can't do that. Purvis would have me. I don't want to get the major in Dutch any more than you Listen, do, but... Trapani, you don't know that guy the way I do. You don't know what he is in this town. He's made these people want to live again, and he's done it all alone. If anything happened to that guy, this town will go right back to the way it was before we got here. Put his heart and his guts into this town. It's his. If he had to leave here, he'd be leaving his heart and his soul and all his guts right here behind him. Look, Bweth, I don't know. I'll get purposes okay, and then... You let me see it before it goes into the mail, huh? Okay. Thanks, pal. Thanks. <laughs> Major in? What are you wanting for? Damn, look for a little brawl we had last oh, night. Oh, you're the guy who broke up old Cacapardo's house. What's the matter with you? You busted a couple of thousand dollars worth of antiques. Ah, you know how it is, boy. That crapper. What? Hey, what do you think you do? I'll ask him. Wait here. You're really going to get chewed. What were you trying to do? Uh, me and Joe Polly got a little lit, see, and... Well, we, we were trying to get a going away present for the major. A what? Ah, well, we figured sooner or later that report would get him. And there were so many beautiful going away presents. And then that Pollock tripped and knocked over a glass cabinet. Funny. Yes, sir. You got that report copied? Yes, sir. Here it is. Hmm. Okay. Shall I, uh... What do you want? Shall I put it in the mail for you, sir? Look, you tried it once and it never got there. Don't worry. I'll see that it gets there myself. And get the rest of the reports out, too. Okay, Schultz, there it goes. You can get the major that going away present now. What a lousy break. Was that it, Trapani? Right in Purvis's pocket. Tough, boy. Yeah, Okay, Schultz, go in and see the major. Schultz, you got drunk and broke up an old man's home. Ruined the things he loved. You've given him a start towards hating Americans the rest of his life. Ah, uh, Major, whatever you get from Captain Purvis, 30 days or 30 months, it won't make up for what you did. Yes, sir. We've got a tough job ahead of us, but we can lick it. In our army, we've got near every race in Europe. No other country in the world has so many men who speak the language of the country they've got to invade, whose parents came from there. 
And that's our chance. Because until there's something stable in Europe, our armies will have to stay here. And just as good as we can make things over here, that's how good they'll be at home. What you guys do today may have a whole lot to do with what your kids and their kids will be doing for years to come. Now, for God's sake, let's grab this chance to bring some sort of sense and, and decency and hope into the world again. It all depends just how good we can be. Captain Purvis, could I speak to you a moment, sir? What's on your mind, boy? I want to make application for a transfer, sir. Yeah, Where right to? Doesn't matter, sir. Getting sick of this dump, huh? Very sick of it, sir. Well, I can't say as I blame you. Uh, that's your only reason? No, sir. I've known Major Joppolo for quite a while, sir. And ever since we've been in Adorno, I've been sort of attached to him. Then why do you want to leave him? I don't, sir. I want to go with him. Where's he going? He's been ordered to Algiers for reassignment. He's been kicked out. Sir. Kicked out? He's the best man we've got here. Yes, sir. This came in the mail this morning. Would you care to hear it, sir? Go ahead. It's addressed to the Major. One. You are authorized to proceed by first available transportation to AFHQ Algiers. Two. The reason for this order is that Major Victor Joppolo did willfully and without consultation countermand orders issued by General Marvin, 49th Division, re-entry of mule carts into town of Adano. The order is signed by General Marvin. That's awful. Yes, sir. Some lousy yellow rat must have reported him. Sir. Or maybe... Maybe somebody on Marvin's staff drove through and saw the carts. Yes, sir. I wonder if we couldn't do something. We might shoot him, sir. Get it over for him quick. Don't try to be funny, boss. Uh, what are you going to do with that order? As soon as I have the guts, I'm going to give it to him. How did you happen to get it? I've been watching the mail for it, sir. I wanted to break it to him as easy as possible. That's a rotten shame. Yes, sir. Mr. Major! Mr. Major! The bell! What? The bell! It's here! Where? In a crate outside. Outside? Hey, Corporal! Stand guard over that crate! Nobody in the no corner, Mr. Major. It took ten sailors to get it off of the dock. Just stay with it till I get down there. How do you like that? We've got one. Hey, boss! We got a bell. We got a bell. Wow. All the people are coming to see it. We have sent for good, so the bell ringer to see if this one is good. <laughs> hey, what do you know? A bell. A bell. We really got one. Hooray for the Navy. Hooray for Yale. Come on, Cito. Come on, boy. Let's go down and take a look at it. Uh, Major, I've got something here. I, uh, uh, a paper. Well, put it on my desk. Come on, boy. Let's see the bell. Okay, don't you. Of the people. Let me. You won't see it if I'm standing there. No, oh, he's standing far. Quick, quick, he's coming up the stairs. Quiet, Aaron Warren. Richo says the tone is perfect. Oh, uh, gentlemen. Good, good, good morning, morning, Mr. Major. Major. I'm glad you're all here. I'm going to call the engineers to get the winch down and hang the bell. Um, what can I do for you, gentlemen? Our business is urgent to be the Major, but they can wait till you call the engineers. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you. Hmm, what's Harvey's number? Oh, Robo blew forward. I hope nothing serious is the matter. Hey, nothing is the major. It can wait. Hello, Major Harvey. This is Joppolo. Yeah. Say, we've got a new bell for the town, and it's got to be raised at the top of the city hall tower. I wonder if you could lend us a hand. Oh, maybe 18 men and a winch? Well, they, they'd like to hear it ring. Maybe this afternoon. Huh? Or oh, tomorrow, then. Not before then? Oh. Oh, uh, I've got an authorization. Yeah, somewhere on my desk. Uh, this one. No, no, this isn't it. This is from... You are authorized to proceed... What? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm still here. Oh, sure. 
Well, do the best you can. He, uh... Well, they'll start raising the bell tomorrow. Now, if you don't mind... Oh, Mr. Major, we have something we wish to give you. We want to give the Mr. Major... A Mr. Major. <laughs> Move aside, Basile, so he can see the portrait. Mr. Major... We have had this portrait painted to give it to you because we wish to show you that... that we wish to show you that... No, he means he wishes to say the eyes. The eyes of this portrait are honest. In the chin, there is strength. In the hair, there is a uniqueness. In the cheeks, there is a sympathetic warmth. And you can see in the picture that that man wishes that... Every person in Adano should be happy. I, um, this, this, this portrait. Thank you. Does he like it? Do not bother him. Outside. Oh, oh, Mr. Major. Huh? Oh, Tina. If, if something is wrong. Oh, no, no. No, this portrait is... You were so happy a few minutes ago about the bell. You picked up the paper. What is it? Oh, Tina. Tina. Tell me, Mr. Major. I'm sorry. Goodbye, Tina. Oh, why do you say goodbye? We will see you tonight. Yes, Tina. Tonight. Ah. Then until tonight, Mr. Major... Goodbye. You're authorized to proceed by first available transportation to HQ Algiers. Jeep will take me to Vichinamare, and the boat for Algiers will leave in the morning. I don't want to say any goodbyes. I, I don't know if I could. That's why I wanted to wait till they've all gone home. I wish I could go with you, sir. I wish you could. Boys, try to help whoever takes my place here to, to do a good job for Adano. Hey, he better be good. Adano needs a man who can understand it. Adano needs you, Major. Well, it's too late to talk about that. All packed. Say, I wonder how Marvin ever found out about the carts. I don't suppose it would make any difference if we knew. No, no. I, I just wondered. I guess that's the works. Yeah. Anyway, we gave him a good start here, didn't we, boys? We sure did, Gucci. The Jeep's waiting. Let's go. <laughs> Listen. It shakes the whole building. just heard the best plays production of A Bell for Adano by Paul Osborne from the novel by John Hersey, starring Arthur Kennedy as Giappolo and Myron McCormick as Borth. And here again is your host, drama critic John Chapman. The old saying has it, to the victor belong the spoils, but to the vanquished town of Adano belongs its bell. It's a fine, touching play, don't you think? And may I thank Arthur Kennedy, Myron McCormick, and their fellow players for giving us such an excellent performance. As for next week's best play, perhaps we shall be having another excellent performance. The play will be Samson Rafelson's comedy about show business, Accent on Youth. And the stars will be Paul Lucas and Sally Forrest. This is Chapman saying goodbye until then. Bell for Adano was transcribed and adapted for radio by Ernest Kenoy. 
Featured in the cast were Carl Weber as Purvis, Joseph Julian as Trapani, Fred Leitner as Schultz, Susan Douglas as Tina, Joseph DeSantis as Nasta, Louis Soren as Tomasino, Tony Randall as Livingston, Roger DeColvin as Father Pensavecchio, Louis Van Ruten as Vasile, Bill Griffiths as Gargano, and recreating his original role as Zito, Gilbert Mack. Best Plays is an NBC production supervised by William Welch and directed by Edward King. Your announcer is Robert Denton. Here is a KFI program note. Here meet the press tonight at 10.30 on NBC.